Here we're going to look at cumulative frequency graphs. Quite a tricky one, one you probably haven't seen since days of GCSE, perhaps. So the first thing we're going to do before we start looking at some statements and some questions you might find in the test is we're going to just look at how to interpret a cumulative frequency graph and what it means. The first thing is that they all look very similar. They start here with a curve that runs from bottom left to top right. And that's because it's a cumulative frequency graph. When we say cumulative frequency, what it means is that we are adding together our frequencies as we go. So each point includes values from the point before. Let's try and interpret the one that we've got here to try and make sense of that. So I've zoomed in on the right to the graph on the left so that we can start to identify some of the features. We're looking at the number of pupils here who scored different marks in the test. So let's look at this point here. This point represents any student that got 10 marks or less. Just going to use our less than or equal to sign here. Less than or equal to 10, how many were there? There was one. So that tells us that one pupil scored 0 to 10. We're not sure what they scored, but it was definitely 10 or less. This point here, now this point we're accumulating our frequencies. So this one says that two pupils scored 20 or less. Now because we're accumulating our frequencies, this 2 also includes the one who got 0 to 10. So we now know that there was only one pupil who scored 11 to 20, so that in total there are two pupils who scored 20 or less. Let's do another one just to make sure we've got that. We're looking at 30 marks or less here, so anything between 0 and 30, and the number of pupils was 4. So if we know four in total scored 30 or less, but two of those scored 20 or less, then we can tell from that that there were two pupils who scored 21 to 30. And you can see here, if we add these up, we get the four that scored 30 or less. Hopefully that starts to help us understand how you read a cumulative frequency graph. Let's just check by answering these questions on the left. How many pupils scored 50 marks or less? Let's use our zoomed in version here. So 50 marks is here, that's this point here, and if we read that off we can see that it's 9. The question says 50 marks or less, and we know that this point includes all the pupil's marks that have come before it, because that's the idea of a cumulative frequency graph. So we're happy that the answer to that is 9. How many pupils scored 31 to 50 marks? Now, what we're interested in is breaking this down a little bit, because whilst we're interested in some of the data below here, we're not interested in any marks that were less than 30. Now we know that there are four students, because we've done that already, who got 30 or less, and nine that got 50 or less. So the difference between those is going to give us our 31 to 50. So there were five pupils in that gap between 31 and 50. Finally, how many people scored more than 50 marks? The best way to do this is by using our full graph on the left and reading off how many pupils there were in total. There were 24. Now we know that there were nine pupils who scored 50 or less, because we used that for the question before, and there were 24 pupils in total. 
So if we calculate 24 less 9, which gives us 15, that should give us the number of pupils scoring more than 50 marks. Hopefully that has given you a bit of an insight into cumulative frequency graphs and in the next screencast we'll look at applying this to some typical questions you'll find in the test.